Hello everybody. It's good to be with you again this week and we're going to continue from the story that we had last week and if you remember it was a story of the prodigal son. First of all I'm going to ask you some questions and I just want you to think about them and think about how you would answer them if we were all together. Are you ready? Have you ever messed up done something that you were so sorry that you did afterwards? How did it feel when you messed up? Just think about that. Did you ask someone to forgive you? And if you did, did they forgive you? Did you feel better after they forgave you? Our story today is one that Jesus told his disciples when he wanted them to include everyone, even people who were doing bad things. In his story, a boy really messes up. So we're going to be checking on the story of the prodigal son. Today's story, just like last, last week's, is about the prodigal son. Um, this story is a parable. A parable is a type of story that Jesus often told his followers to help people understand some pretty hard concepts. In this parable, Jesus tries to help understand, help people understand how much God really loves and forgives them and how important they are to God. Jesus uses a story about a son who left home but returned after a long, long time. The father in the story was so happy to see him that he had a big celebration. But that kind of made the older brother mad. He had stayed home all that time and helped his father, but his father never gave him a big party. When Jesus told this parable to his disciples, one of the most important things he was teaching is that everyone belongs to God's family. Isn't that good news? That means us. We all belong to God's family. We all are a part of his family, and we can know God's love and forgiveness always. Wow. That is something to celebrate. <clears throat> so we're going to take a look at the parable. And remember, it's in the book of Luke. Remember, Luke is in the New Testament, and it's one of the four Gospels. The New Testament begins with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those four are called the Gospels. And the Gospels mean they tell the story of Jesus' life on earth from his birth until his um, crucifixion and resurrection, coming back to life. Today I'm going to read the story. It's the story form from the Message, which is a, a version of the Bible. And it starts like this. I'm going to put my glasses on, I think, so I can read better happens when you get older. By this time, a lot of men and women of doubtful reputation were hanging around Jesus, listening intently. The Pharisees, who were the religious scholars, were not pleased. They were not pleased at all that Jesus was spending his time with these other people. They growled, he takes in sinners and eats meals with them treating them just like old friends. And this is what led Jesus to tell this story, this parable, to these people. Then Jesus said, There was once a man who had two sons. The, un he, the younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags 
and left for a distant country. And just a side note there, remember that they had to, wherever they went, they had to walk. And they think that from Israel to Judah, where he went, was a very long distance. So we don't know how long this trip took him and how long he walked. And he would have just had sandals. Coming home, he probably was barefoot. <coughs> So, the younger son packed his bags and left for the distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all his money, there was a bad famine in the country. And a famine is when you run out of food. You can't, aren't able to produce enough food to feed the people. This famine was all through the country, and the son began to hurt he signed on with a citizen there who assigned him to his fields to slop the pigs. That was his job, to, to feed the pigs. He was so hungry that he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, All those farmhands and servants working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am, starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take me on as a hired man. He got right up and went home to his father. Now remember, he had to walk a long, long ways to get back. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. His heart was pounding. He ran out. He embraced his son and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants, Quick, bring a qu clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a grain-fed heifer and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead, and now he's alive. Given up for lost, and now he's found. And they began to have a wonderful time. All this time, his older son was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the houseboys, he asked what was going on. He told him, Your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast, barbecued beef, because he has him home safe and sound. The older brother stalked off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, Look how many years I have stayed here serving you, never giving you one moment of grief. But have you ever thrown a party for me and my friends? Then this son of yours who has thrown away your money in partying shows up and you go all out with a feast. His father said, Son, you don't understand. You are with me all the time, and everything that is mine is yours. But this is a wonderful time, and we had to celebrate. This brother of yours was dead, and he's alive. He was lost, and now he's found. I really like that story because tells us um, just how much God loves us, just like that father did. No matter what we do, he, um, we can mess up all the time, but he loves us. And if we ask him to, he'll forgive us and, and take over. We're going to make a little, just some of the words from the story, and I'm going to write them on this whiteboard. And think of some of the words from the story. It, it certainly ended with joy, so 
I'm going to write that at the top. I've got joy. I'm sorry, this will turn out backwards. But um, there was certainly sin involved because because this son went off on his own and spent his money foolishly. It's a story about a son, about two sons, really. I'm sorry, that's. Yeah, I'd have to read backwards. Um, what, something wonderful that happened was when he came back, there was forgiveness. And that reminds us of how Jesus forgives us. And that causes us to celebrate, just like the Father and the sons did. So I have forgive Jesus and celebrate. Remember what animal he fed? He ended up feeding the pig, so the pig was in the story. There was a father in the story, and a brother. Um, it was a sad time before he realized that what he had done. He used up all his dad's money and when it got so bad and he didn't know what to do, he decided to go home. So, this is what it looks like. I'm sorry, Jake. I'm not, I should have written backwards. But, joy, sin, son, these are all parts of the story. There was forgiveness. The father forgave the son. And that reminds us of Jesus who forgives us. And a time for celebration. Jesus celebrates when we come back to him. And he loves us so much. There were certainly pigs in the story. And a father and a brother who was, did not appreciate what was going on. There was sadness and a waste of money. And when all else failed, he wanted to. To go home. So I don't know if you can see that, but hopefully it makes a sign of a sign of a cross. So it's kind of a reminder of um, how this story is a story of how God forgives us, and he did that by dying on the cross for us. Okay. <clears throat> okay. When Jesus told this parable, who do you think were the students? Who was he teaching or telling this to? Remember, it was a group of of men called the Pharisees. And Pharisees knew all the religious laws and they knew all the words of the prophets and they thought they were better than everyone else because they thought that they knew everything. Um, why do you think Jesus needed to teach people that already thought they knew everything? Mm -mm. These people were Pharisees, and they didn't like the other people that Jesus was hanging out with. He was hanging out with sinners, people who had done bad things or evil things, and the Pharisees didn't think that's who he should be with. Um, we know from the Bible that he met with tax collectors. They were people that um, other people didn't like because they collected money. Um... He welcomed all kinds of sinners, and he even ate dinner with them sometimes. And so all of this are reminders to us that God welcomes everybody. He's a welcoming God, and he welcomes us. Who is welcomed in our story today? The prodigal son, the younger son, when he came back, was certainly welcomed. And who welcomed him? His father. Who did not welcome the younger son? The older son.
because he was jealous and he thought that that was very unfair for the younger son to have a party after all he had done. <clears throat> so in this story, who do you think God is in this story? God is, is the father in this story. And who is the tax collector or the sinner? That's you and me, because we, in this story, it was the younger son, and that represents you and I, people who do sin. And who was the Pharisee in this story? Who was the one that thought he was better than someone else, and he thought he was being, tr being treated unfairly? It was the older brother. Okay. I thought I was hoping I had a, a stuffed pig, but I didn't. So we're going to have to do with this picture. And I just thought it might be fun to, to talk a little bit about some facts about pigs. We know that they were considered... Um, one of the one of the nastiest or the most unclean animals in the time in this time. Anyway, there's some fun questions about pigs or some facts. A pig's nose is called his snout. A pig has small eyes and its tail can be curly or straight. Looks like this one. Pretty straight with a little curl at the bottom. A pig's body is thick and it has short legs. A pig's foot has four toes. We can't really see that here. And it walks on the two biggest toes in the middle. A pig is an omnivore. An omnivore means an animal that eats both plants and small animals. Pigs are known as scavengers. That means they like to root around and search for food. Some of a pig's favorite foods include dead insects, worms, tree bark, rotting animal carcasses, and garbage. Wild pigs root around for food on their own and usually eat leaves, grasses, roots, fruits, and flowers. This is interesting. Pigs are considered the fourth most intelligent animal in the world. A pig's tongue has 15,000 taste buds. You and I, as humans, our tongues only have 9,000 taste buds, but a pig has 15,000. And pigs are mentioned only twice in the Bible, and one of those times is in this story that we read today about the prodigal son. Now that you know so much about pigs, do you think you'd ever want to have a pig as a pet? Does it surprise you that Jesus used pigs in this story of the prodigal son? <clears throat> as a quick review of our story, think about the story was the when did this happen? When did these things happen? First of all, when was the party? Can you answer that? It was at the end of the story when the son came home. Why did the father throw the, his son a party? Because he was so happy to have him return. He loved him so much. Why was the party a surprise to the son, to the younger son? Remember? He was going to come home and tell his dad that he wasn't worthy to be his son anymore and he just wanted to work as a hired hand and, and have food. But his father surprised him by forgiving him. What does the father's love tell us about God's love? It tells us the same thing. No matter how much we mess up, God loves us and he forgives us no matter what we do when we seek his forgiveness. So remember that story. 
Let's close today. If you just close your eyes and we'll pray together. Dear God, thank you for surprising us with love every day. We know that your love for us never ends, but sometimes we forget that. Thank you for sending us the story of the prodigal son to remind us that our guesses aren't always right. No matter what, you love us and you forgive us. Thank you, God. Amen. Have a great week.